Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Pandas. Pandas is an open source Python library and it provides high performance, easy to use data structures and data analysis tools. It runs on top of NumPy, so NumPy is a dependency for Pandas. And it's very popular for data science, financial modeling, statistics, that kind of thing. And the current version that this video is based on is version 0.23.1. So you might ask, well, what's the difference between pandas and NumPy? Well, NumPy is a low-level data structure, NumPy arrays, and pandas is a high-level data structure, the data frame. NumPy supports large, multi-dimensional arrays and matrices, and it has a wide range of mathematical array operations that you can apply to those arrays and matrices. Pandas is more streamlined for handling tabular data. So think of Pandas as a spreadsheet. And it also has rich time series functionality. So if you have a lot of time series data, there are a lot of functions built into Pandas for handling that time series data. It also does data alignment. It handles missing data. And then group by, merge, join, some of these kind of SQL type methods for joining tables. And you can also use Pandas data structures to store your data in and then you can use NumPy and SciPy functions to manipulate that data. So you can actually use both of them together. So the dependencies, as I said, Pandas is built on top of NumPy, so NumPy is a dependency for Pandas. You need to install NumPy first and then Pandas. Actually SciPy and Matplotlib are also dependent upon NumPy, so NumPy is really an essential building block for these other important Python libraries. And then higher level libraries like scikit-learn, scikit-image, they build on top of that. So NumPy is basically a foundational data structure in Python. And if you want to read the documentation or download Pandas, you can go to this URL, pandas.pydata.org. Now we're going to show a series of 12 examples. So we're going to learn by examples. There's 12 examples. I'll provide the code on GitHub. You can try them out one by one. I'm going to walk you through them and explain how the code works. So for our imports, first we're going to have import numpy as np, import pandas as pd. Like I said, numpy is a dependency for pandas. We need that every time we use pandas. And then I created this dummy little header here. It's a little function. And we'll look at the first example. So the first example is loading hard-coded data into a pandas data frame. The data structure in pandas is called a data frame. To load that, first I called my header function. I passed in a string just so it prints out. That's just printing the header. You're going to see that every time. The data frame is pd.dataframe. And then we pass in some arguments. So our first argument is this, basically all the numbers, all the data. Now, I have a separate data file called Fremont Weather. And it has month, average high, average low, record high, record low and average precipitation. Those are our columns or fields. Then I have 12 months of data, January through December. And we've got a numerical value for each one of those, as you can see here. So that is our data file. We're going to use this data file for all 12 examples. Except for the first example, we've got that data hard-coded in. And you see it in a list of lists. We pass in, it has all the data in it. And then our next argument is the index. So we're going to have an index for each row of data, and then the column names, which is our field names. So those are the arguments that we pass in to the data frame creator, and then we're going to print the data frame. So we'll save this, we'll open up a command line prompt, and we're going to run that, and it just prints out our data frame. So that's what our data frame looks like. This is my little header here, by the way. Load hard-coded data into a data frame. So we print out the index on the left column here, and then the month, and then each uh, column of data. And it prints out our header as well. So let's take a look at the next example. Since you don't want to hard code your data every time, we're going to import the data file. Here's how we're going to do it. Read text file into the data frame. We're going to print out the header again. And then our file name is fremontweather.txt. I'll also put the data file into my GitHub site so you can play with that. And then we create a data frame, p 
pd.readcsv and it creates a data frame from that, from that file. And it's that simple. So with one line of code, we basically read in the entire CSV file into a data frame. Very efficient. So let's uh, save that and then try running it. So look, we get exactly the same data frame printed out. No difference. So let's try example number three. And by the way, we're going to leave example number two on the screen here because we need that. So example number three, we can print the first five lines or the last three lines of the data frame. And we use that using the head or tail function. And these are actually Linux commands. If you're familiar with Linux, you already know these. df.head gives you the first five as a default. Or if you pass in an argument, you can say three or two or however many lines of data you want. Then you'll get that many. We'll try running that at the command line. So we can see we printed out the first five. This is df.head. We print out the first five rows of data. And df.tail, we print out the last three rows of data. So let's look at example number four. Example number four, we're going to get data types, index, columns, and values. So these are variables that are attached to each data frame. We can just print these out as a sequence. So data types, we just do df.dtypes. And then index is just df.index. And columns, df.columns and values is df.values, although we won't be accessing the values using this, this method very often. So, But that's one way to access all these variables that are attached to each data frame. So let's run that and see how it works. See what data we get. So here you go. D the data types, the month is an object because it's actually a string, so it calls it an object. And the rest of these are int 64s and um, average precipitation is a float 64 because it's a floating point value. So data frame dot index basically is 0 to 12 with a step of 1. So in other words our index along the left column is going from 0 to 11. This index over here. And our column names, that's just a list of column names, and our values, that's the table of values. And these by the way are the arguments that we passed in when we created the data frame using the hard-coded method. So that's example number four. Next we're going to look at a statistical summary of this data. Let's run that and see how it looks. So here's the statistical data we get using df.describe. For each data field or each column we get a count, we get mean, standard deviation, the min, 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile, and also the max. So we, get, we can see how the data is distributed and it's really just with one simple command. So you get a lot of information from a single command. Of course we know that the count for each one of these is 12. We have 12 months. But there may be some cases where there's not a number there, so the count may not be 12. So let's look at our next example. In example number six, we're going to sort the records. And we can sort it by any column we want. We'll use df.sortValues. We're going to sort by record high. We could, again, we can sort by record high, or we could sort by uh, actually multiple columns if we want. If we have duplicate values for some columns and we want to sort on two columns, we can do that as well. And I'm going to pick ascending equals false. In other words, we want, to, we want it sorted descending by record high. So we're going to print that out. We'll save this and run it. So you get what you expect. Uh, they're sorted by record high. You can see our record high column here starts at 107, goes down to 73, hottest month being June. So no surprises. So it's very easy to sort rows of data based on a single column or multiple columns. And you can sort it ascending or descending. And you can also sort by indices. Now our next example is a little more complicated. We're going to slice rows or columns of data here. There's uh, a number of different ways to slice, so I have a bunch of different examples I'm going to show. So first slicing using df.avlo. So if we just want one column of data, we can do df.avlo using the um, dot operator and the column name. So that gives us a single column of data. And then df uh, with square brackets and then a single parenthesis or double parenthesis avlo, it would give us also the same thing. So this gives us exactly the same thing if you want one column. There's two different ways to get it, using a dot operator or the square brackets with a parenthesis. If we want to slice out multiple rows of the data, uh, we already looked at the head and tail, but we can also do 
using the square brackets, we can slice out multiple rows of um, contiguous data. So here we're going to get rows 2 to 3 using df square bracket 2 colon 4. So that's similar to how Python uh, lists are sliced. You can slice data out of a list or a string in Python. And another way to slice, you can slice multiple columns by providing a list of column names. So df in square brackets, and then what we pass in inside the square brackets is a list, a list of column names. So we have a double square brackets. So inside that double square brackets, we can put any column names we want. And then next, we can use df.loc, which is location. Location is able to take four parameters. So it can take a from row, to row, and it can take multiple columns in a list. So here I passed in average low and average high, but since I want all of the rows, I just put a colon with no, no parameters. So this should give us all rows and only two columns of data. But if we only wanted specific rows and specific columns, we could use this locator to get that. And we can slice all the way down to a scalar value using exactly the same method. So we use df.loc. We put in a numerical parameter for the index of the row that we want. And then we put in the name of the column that we want. So this gives us the average precipitation for the month of October. And lastly, here we use df.loc i location which is index location so now instead of using the name of the column we're using an index of the columns so i loc from rows three to five and columns zero to three so let's um let's save this and then run it and then see how it looks so there's a lot of different examples here let's scroll up and take a look at them one by one and i printed my header before each one of them so this is slicing df.averageLow, that just gives us one column. That's using the dot operator. This is using the square brackets, like I said, with the parentheses around the column name. And that will give you that column. And then slicing using df multiple rows, two to four, non-inclusive. This one gives us multiple columns. So we use double square brackets to get multiple columns with the column names included. So we got average low and average high here. Here we use df.loc. And we got all of the rows, as you can see, because we didn't pass in any parameters before or after that colon. We still have to put the colon, because that's the first parameter that's required for df.loc. But then we did put what columns we want, average low and average high. And here we got a scalar value, just average precipitation for October, 0.81. And here we got rows 3 to 4, 5 is non-inclusive, and columns 0 to 3. So that's a lot of different ways to slice data. Now let's look at filtering. So we have two different methods for filtering data. One is you can filter on column values. We can say df with a square bracket, and then using the dot operator, df dot average precipitation greater than 1.0. Now we could use the double equals here. We can use uh, less than anything that will return a Boolean return for this comparison. Right, it's going to do a comparison inside the square brackets and return a boolean yes or no. So that's one way of filtering values. And another way is using the is in. You can provide a list of values. It doesn't have to be strings. It can be numerical values or, or a list of strings in this case. And you can use is in. So it will select, in this case, months that are in June, July, and August. I just went to summer months. It will print the data frame where data frame month is in June, July, and August list. So we can see on uh, number eight here, our first output gave us only the months with precipitation greater than one inch. You can see they all have greater than one inch of precipitation. And this one gave us only the summer months, June, July, and August, using the is in function. Example number nine is assignment. And this is very similar to slicing. So if you were paying attention on the slicing part, this would be pretty easy. You just add an equal sign. For our first one, we want to set average precipitation for October equal to 101.3. We got just a torrential rainfall every, every October, let's say. So df.loc, using the location, 9, and then average precipitation equals 101.3. And then we're going to print out that value, a few rows, just so we can see where that 101.3 shows up. And that's assigning a single scalar value to one cell in the array. Um, next, 
So pandas has this thing called not a number, N-A-N. And it handles very well when you're missing data. So if you have, if you're importing a data file and you expect there to be a number there, but there's an empty field, or if there's a string where there should be a number there, it handles that very well. So instead of having to set up exception handling every time you're you're reading data or importing data, pandas does this for you behind the scenes. It uses just not a number value for that field. And then when it's doing calculations on a column or a row of data or whatever, and it sees a not of number, it will just skip that row. So here we're going to assign the not a number, which you probably wouldn't normally do, but you can assign not a number to a specific field. And then we'll print a few rows out just to see how that looks. Next example, we're going to use df.loc, so location for all rows using the column average low. So let's say we want to change the average low to 5 for every single row. This would do that. This is going to change the average low to 5 for all rows. And you can see that we have all rows because we have a colon with no parameters on either side of it. And then we just have the column name average low. And what this passes in is a NumPy array of fives. And then we'll print out the first five rows of that so you can see. And here we decided to add another field. We're adding another column to our pandas data frame called average day. And average day is the average of the average low and average high. So we're going to add together df.average low and df.average high. We'll divide that by two and we'll assign that to this new column called average day. And then we'll print out the whole data frame just so you can see the average day column added. Let's save that, run it, and take a look at it. So our first example, we assigned 1 to 1.3, and you can see it here. We printed out two rows. Uh, next example, we used the not a number. So this is the pandas not a number. You'll see N-A-N, not a number, sometimes in pandas. And next one, we put fives in every row. We just printed out the first five rows, but we put fives in every row for average low. And you can see that here. And in the last one, we added on this extra field. So it's this easy to add on an extra field. We can just use df, and then in square brackets, the name of the field, and then the set of values. So we see our average day on the end here. Now let's look at example number 10. So example 10, we're going to show you how to rename columns. There's two ways to do this. If you want to just rename one column at a time, you can use df.rename. And then what we're going to pass in is columns equals the original name and the new name. And this is basically a dictionary. And it's important you either use in place equals true or you say df equals df.rename in lieu of using the in place equals true. So you have to do one or the other. So I chose to use df equals true so that it saves these changes to the data frame. And then print out the first five rows of data so you can see it. Um, now if you want to change all of the column names you can just pass in a new list to this df.columns variable. So here we just have a list of new column names in a list, and we assign that to df.columns. So this is an easy way to change all the column names at once if we want. So let's save that. Let's run it. And you can see here we did the in place equals true, so that actually saved our average rain change here. And we changed all of the column names here in the second example. Now this example is something I hope you won't use very often. This is how to iterate a data frame. So hopefully you won't need to use iteration because you can use the built-in function to update your data and to, to manipulate your data. However, you can iterate if needed using a for loop and you use the iterose function to do that. Python uh, data frame iterose. So df.iterose and it gives you the index and the row of data. And here I just chose to print out two columns. So we'll save that, we'll run it, see how it looks. So you can see we got our um, index and the two columns of data. And our last example is the simplest. This is simply how to write the data frame to a CSV file. You can dump the whole thing to a CSV file with this much code, df.2csv, and then whatever your file name is. Very easy to write the data frame to CSV file. And you can write to other formats as well using, um, let's say, 2Excel or different formats. You can dump. Pandas takes care of all the work behind the scenes so you don't have to worry about it. So there's not much to see when I run that, so um, we'll skip that.
I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.